Hi, everyone. I'm Jael. Um, I'm Jael Sewab Watson. I'm the executive director for Open Foundation West Africa. And I'm here today to speak about um, a project that is very dear to our hearts in the organization Open Foundation West Africa. Let me tell you a little about Open Foundation West Africa. So we are based in Ghana, but we have a community base that spreads across Africa. And we are kind of obsessed about education. Um, when you read a lot about us, you realize that most of our activities or programs are centered around education. So we have um, stuff around what the previous presenter talked about. We have projects for librarians called Wiki Skills for Librarians. And then we also have kind of implemented that club and hub system that he talked about. So we have clubs in universities that focus on training students on Wikipedia and then its related projects. We also have um, hubs in communities. So um, these are community-based, so it really focuses on what the community needs at every particular time. Now, this represents what our organization stands for. Our mission is really to contribute towards the future of education. And so we do this through sensitization, organizing campaign drives um, to generate content, especially about Africa. And then we aim to make education more accessible and affordable. So we are into making open ed education accessible and affordable to everyone. Now to the main topic for today, the Kiwix for Schools project. So Kiwix um, is an offline software where you install on any device. It could be a computer, a phone, a tablet, any electronic device. When you install the software on your phone, you are allowed to um, import files onto that software. So you normally generate content from Wikipedia, wherever you want, in the form of PDF, docs, or whatever, you zip those files and import onto the Kerex software. And so what happens is that information that may otherwise be available online is now accessible offline. So you can now read Wikipedia articles and everything offline. You do not need internet to do that. What we have done with Kerex is to integrate that into the education system. So we named the program the Kirix for Schools program. In 2019, we conducted um, a research kind of, and this was presented by my colleagues in um, Singapore last year at Wikimania. They had um, a presentation on how we use Kirix. They even taught how it is installed. So in 2019, a needs assessment was conducted in Ghana, and the pilot um, project was initiated. But unfortunately, due to COVID, it was put to a hold. But um, in 2021, we restarted it. And then between 2021 and 2022, 777 students had been trained to use um, QX. Um, and these were in about 22 schools across seven regions in Ghana. In 2022, after we realized the impact that this is making, it is notable to also know that out of this number, 49.8% were females, which is a really big deal to us because back in Africa, you do not get a lot of female um, activation of female particip participation, if I must say, in a lot of wiki projects. So making this in as an integral part of the education system kind of encourages people to use it. And so after 2022, we realized the impact we we're making and decided to scale it in, in Africa. And then we had the Africa Mentorship Program last year, the Kirix for Schools Africa Mentorship Program. The idea was to train people to be trainers of Kirix. And so we developed a course where people enrolled. We had about 200 people registering for the program. And then we selected 100 people to actually undertake the course. Out of this, 64 people successfully um, graduated. So that's like a 64% um, rate of excellence for us. And 
After that, they had become the mentors. So we piloted the project also in five countries, in Nigeria, in Tanzania, and a couple of other countries. We sponsored the pilots. From there, we realized the impact that, sorry, we realized the impact that um, we were making and decided to, you know, take a pause, reflect on whatever is happening and see how we can move forward. But before that, before we even think of the things to work on, it is also important to acknowledge the achievements we have made. So yes, it's time to take our flowers and, and know that indeed we are making progress. When we consulted the community, these are some of the things they really loved about the whole program. The fact that it's making education easily accessible to them and the fact that there is diversity and inclusion. Um, I talked about 49.8% of the trainees being women and uh, making education affordable as well. So the traditional way of learning in Ghana is through textbooks, um, which are kind of expensive for um, students and their parents as well. So students would probably just rely on what they are taught in class. But here, you get access to external reading materials that you can access. What we did was to usually go to the schools and because a lot of people do not have personal laptops and tablets and all that, we use their computer labs. So they have ICT labs with a host of computers. We install everything on there that they can access at their own time. After acknowledging the achievements, now let's see what we can do better. So out of reflection and out of um, evaluation, actually last year we consulted an um, external um, expert to conduct evaluations into our organization and the programs that we run. What we realized from the QX for Schools program was that people had issues with the software installation itself. They felt that it took a bit too long to install the software. They also realized that there is not much um, interactive content. It, they are all reading materials. And yeah, we are in a generation where um, students want to get interactive. They learn more by um, having interactive content. And then the materials that they relied on um, through Kerwigs were also um, kind of foreign to them. Even though it provided much information on the topics they needed, they could not really relate to it because they are reading probably an article written by someone in the US, someone in Switzerland, you know, but they want something that's contextualized that they can um, really relate with. Also that it really focused much on students. We had provided articles for students to read more on, and during our trainings, we trained a couple of teachers, but it's just to actually guide the students. Teachers were worried. How do we even know that students are reading the materials? There's no way to assess, um, there's no way to assess that. So that was also um, a worry to them. And this is what led us to the Kiwix for Schools revamp this year. So after all of these learnings, we realized, okay, let us take a pause. Are we making the actual impact we want to make? Yes, we've made some sort of impact. But if we want to make a greater impact, the actual impact we want to make, then it, it is really um, good to sit, reflect, and then re-strategize on how we can implement this program better. So an initial conversation with the Wikimedia Foundation yielded results, and then we were granted $25,000 to kickstart um, this revamp process. It actually started with a lot of conversations. You know, um, as an organization, the core team sat, we had a lot of conversations. We had conversations with um, employees from the foundation. We had people from the partnerships team, the education team, the grants team, all of us um, engaging with us on how best to go about this. So the conversations centered around these um, areas, basically. Um, Ghana has an education strategic plan um, from now until 2030. So we realized that if we want to make the most impact, 
then maybe we should align with the interest of government as well. So we decided to align with the Ghana's Education Strategic Plan with SDG4, which talks about quality education, and then AU's Agenda 2063, which mainly focused on education, but specifically teacher training. I'll come back to why teacher training is really important in this. Along the line, EduWiki also um, published their theory of change. And since we are still in the movement and a lot of our content on QX is from Wikipedia and its related projects, then it was important to also align with EduWiki's theory of change. And of course, this whole thing is for the community. So the community is needed as well. And it led us to designing a theory of change. When we designed the theory of change, we realized that yes, we all had the same goals, but there were some gaps um, re in relation to the current implementation and the documents or the goals we want to align with. We realized that um, quality of teaching was a bit lacking in the current implementation of the Careers for Schools program because yes, it aided learning, but teachers did not benefit much from it. They wanted it to impact their teaching as well. They wanted to be able to use that to assess students' progress, maybe even have courses on there. We also realized that if we want it to be really sustainable, then there is much work to be done. So these were the gaps we identified and we thought, okay, then why don't we just go back to the community and get their ideas on this? Because of course, this is for them. And since there were a lot of mentors around implementing the project, both in Ghana and in, in other countries, it was important to get their perspective as well. And that led to a two day community design workshop, more of an engagement session with the community to get their ideas. Day one focused mainly on introduction to the new concepts of the um, revamp process and then out kind of getting ideas. So day one was more of an open-ended session where we are just getting the ideas of the community before we streamline them. So day one, there was, um, an, um, it was mainly a brainstorming session. And we realized that these four outcomes mattered most to their community. And so they felt that if we are going to have a revamp of the Curious for Schools program, these are the outcomes they look out for the most. The first being enhanced teacher training. A lot of them, um, Curious mentors, were teachers. And so they felt if we are installing this for students to learn, why can't, we, uh, why can't it be beneficial to us as well? Why can't it aid in teaching? So we have to train um, teachers. These are the outcomes they are looking for. Increased student engagement as well, because as I said, they only went there to read external materials, but it wasn't really engaging enough. But the community feels like this new module should really engage students. And then outcomes of learning, it shouldn't just be I've gone there and I have read. It, there should be some sort of assessment that shows that indeed a person has read and understood whatever they have read that impacts the learning outcomes. And the program should be sustainable because they feel this current module isn't really sustainable. Just installing students learning, not being able to track does not make the whole program sustainable. Then day two, this is where um, we, we thought of strategies to um, implement in order to achieve the outcomes expected. So they too focused mainly on strategy building and participants felt that if we can achieve all the outcomes that they outlined earlier, we could do that through the relevant partnerships. And I need to stress that these are not the only strategies mentioned, but um, after um, getting all the strategies, we prioritized them. So the community also voted, and these are the um, voter strategies they chose that we should re really focus on, because of course, we cannot do everything. If we have about 10, 15 strategies, we cannot do everything, but what should we focus on? 
And this um, voting was done based on impact versus feasibility. So which strategy will make the best impact and how feasible is it to make, um, to go do that strategy? The first one will be relevant partnership. So having partnerships with um, local government and education institutions, like the ministries of education, the education service, this will help to make the program sustainable. Um, also, other agencies concerned about education. You have UNESCO, you have the AU education team. So relevant partnerships would really help. And then localization of content. As I mentioned earlier, the content kind of seemed foreign to them. They want a content that is contextualized, even translated into their various local languages. Teacher training here, our focus mainly would be on teacher trainees in colleges of education, not the teachers already in the field. Because we tried that strategy, but we realized that um, once they're already in the field, it becomes difficult to um, take up new things. But those in school and yet to graduate can learn it as part of their program. And then once they come out, it would be easy to um, implement this. And curriculum alignment as well, so that we provide the relevant materials that students really need. So this also means that we should have partnerships with the colleges of education that train, that train teachers. We should have um, partnerships with the institutions that are in charge of designing the students' curriculum for schools. And personalized learning and gamification, this would really ensure engagement so that they do not just go there to read, but there's some sort of engagement um, that they can interact with. With this, we analyze the data we compiled from the two-day session and then designed a comprehensive implementation plan that focused mainly on needs assessments. Um, the first part of the needs assessments was um, engaging with the community anyway. So getting to know the needs of the schools as well and doing things that would suit them. Um, designing modules of training this time around, not just for students, but for teachers as well. Content curation, so here we are focusing on a campaign drive where we organize campaigns for um, local people to get more content on Wikipedia and its related projects. So we give them, we will have a list of articles that we want. We give them the topics we need them to write on and then they get the sources and and get the content on Wikipedia for us. We would also do translations into local languages. And since participants also were worried about the whole installation process, it meant that there should be hackathons um, to develop the tech parts of the software, and not just the installation, to make this, um, the software receptive to some of the new training modules that we want to use, like the gamifications and all of that. So we need to organize hackathons as well. And now once we have the contents we need that's aligned to the curriculum, we now integrate into the schools. So what next? These are things we have done now. What is next to be done? The next thing to be done, the very most important thing to be done is partnership exploration. So we are doing this with the Wikimedia Foundation's partnerships team, getting the relevant partnerships we need in order to make this project sustainable. And then after we are able to get these partnerships, we kickstart the process by piloting it in Ghana. And then we evaluate the progress of the Curious for Schools program in Ghana. Once we evaluate it, we get to know the things we did right, the things that need improvement. And then once we solve the ones that need improvement, we can now scale to Africa like we did with the first module. So this is what I have about the Curious for Schools revamp. I'm open to questions as well, thank you.
Okay, we have got a few online, but do we have anyone in person? Okay, okay. If there's any in person, you ask. If not, then we'll move to online. Yeah, okay. I can see why. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much for the nice presentation. I'm very interested on it because uh, I love the Kiwi software. Uh, we've been using it in Ecuador uh, for the Ovlinepedia project for similar purposes uh, for around five years already. So I would be interested on uh, hearing uh, how you solve the technological gap. Because, for example, in our case, in many rural villages, they don't even have computers or uh, and not even cell phones. So that was... Uh, that was a, a gap that we had to fill, but I would like to hear about how how, how you, you you handle the situation. Okay, so um, we also have that um, same situation in Ghana. We face the same challenge. Last year, we secured a partnership with Labdu, and they provided us with a few laptops um, to give to students for this. So this year, we are also um, focusing on that as well. Our partnerships we would also be looking at um, all of these organizations or companies that provide these tools, their laptops, their tablets, or whatever that we can get for the students. So Labdu, they do not even provide new laptops, but we don't mind. We just want something that students can use. So they are refurbished laptops. So if someone has a laptop that he thinks, okay, the battery is pulled or something is pulled, but doesn't want to you know, waste time to do it or something, they pick it up, refurbish it, and then bring it to us to use. So these are some of the partnerships that helped us, and this is where our concentration will also be in the revamp projects as well. Yeah. No, fantastic, thank you very much. And yeah, as a, as a little last idea, I wanted to tell you how we solved the problem. So uh, in offlinepedia.org, we have some tutorials on how to uh, resurrect old machines. So what we do is to build Frankenstein of old machines. So every computer is different and you know, you, we don't spend much money because uh, we can take the better pieces of some computers and sample one uh, cheap computer and let Kiwix run. So congratulations. Thank you. Person? There's, oh, there's one. <clears throat> yes, hello. I was um, interested in the Kiwix for School program in, like, in Senegal, and I was wondering what type of schools do you work with? Because I seem to understand it's just a few private schools that have partnerships with the Orange Foundation, and I was wondering if you do anything with the larger, you know, government public schools okay so the goal is actually to serve the larger public schools but the major challenge is that these schools do not have the computers that we need to install the software on and that is why we start with the private schools um so i i i don't think i can and emphasize the importance of partnerships you know partnering with um institutions and companies that can provide these for the schools that really need the service. Because um, we want to install in a public school, but a whole school may have just one computer. It won't be effective because the students may not even have access to it to gain the knowledge that they need at all times. And that is why we start from the private schools. So we start with the schools that have and then generally you know, gradually come down to serve those that do not have. But before that, we may have to provide them these um, computers as well. Okay, do we have any other in-person questions? It doesn't appear that we have. So I'm going to read out a quest. I mean, a person from the Netherlands who has this to say. The content seems to be foreign to them. Question, English Wikipedia articles by themselves are not teaching materials. What content is needed instead? And then I think he says that you, just, you were speaking about that in the talk. Then he finally says, it might be a step forward to have an encyclopedia for children like the Klepsikon. But still, that is a nice additional resource for schools, but not a teaching aid itself. I think I didn't get the first part. The you first part, I think, I think you sort of answered that in the in the talk. Like he was okay. saying, like the current seems to be falling to them, and he was asking about 
English Wikipedia articles by themselves are not teaching materials. Yeah. What content is needed instead? And then he said that you kind of talked about that in your yeah. lecture. Yeah. And his second quest, second part of question would be like, it might be a step forward to have an encyclopedia for children like the Klexicon. Mm-hmm. But still, that is a nice additional resource for schools, but not a teaching aid itself. Yeah, I think that um, context is really important. So you should have content relevant to the population you are serving. If you are providing a service to kinder, um, sorry, primary schools, you shouldn't go straight away to English Wikipedia. So simple Wikipedia and all of that could help. So context really matters. And this is um, something we are going to really focus on. We won't use one approach fit all. It will be contextualized based on the needs. Okay, I think that's it. I don't see any other questions. There's a question here. Yeah, I don't think he has come back. Uh, let me just check with him. But I mean, anyway, if he has... Oh, he's going to present another question for me in person. Mm-hmm. You know that. Just focusing on that. Hi. Um, I mean, we did speak about the English Wikipedia, simple English Wikipedia, and sometimes also for, you know, like the primary students, the, like... I mean, you need that kind of like a reading skills to like understand how this work, uh, like understand the encyclopedic uh, articles. Uh, have you tried to like provide resources to students in their local language? Because I know uh, you work with in Ghana yeah. and the medium of education in Ghana is English, but Ghana is also a very diverse country yeah. with like people <laughs> speaking like hundreds of languages. Yeah. And there are some Wikipedias in those languages. So have you tried to provide students' resources in their own local language. Yeah. So um, I think um, I mentioned it earlier, but you were late, so you couldn't get that yet. So in the content creation process, we are doing translations as well into the various local languages, Chi Wikipedia, Gan Wikipedia, and all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we are. Oh, unfortunately, I think we're out of time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so you will have. You can ask your question in the hall. You can ask me questions. I also have the these cl- here. The I'm sorry. That out of kind time. of summarizes whatever we do in my organization. I can provide each person with one. We have our contacts there. You can contact me whenever you're ready. Right. Okay.